Dan Roach in the back. Hi, Jacoby. Uh, could you just take us through your afternoon uh, and what was that like for you? Obviously, concern over Drake, but to come in and do what you did and then to see you guys push it in fourth and goal, what did that mean for the team today? Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, you never want to see a player go down. Uh, uh, and obviously, hoping Drake gets back. But, uh, you know, I think it was it was a good win, you know, fighting through adversity. Uh, you know, we got challenged earlier this week. Uh, the guys came out and responded well, um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, being able to come in the game and guys rally around me and help help make plays and and um, you know and we obviously pushed it in at the end to to score the win. Um, I think that was an encompass of a lot of things throughout the season. Uh, you know, just hoping this is a snowball effect and um, you know we, we start something special. Alan Siegel on your left. Jacoby, there have been other drives this year and late in the fourth quarter where things did not work out. Take us in the huddle for this final drive. What happened in terms of confidence and execution that allowed you to pull this drive up to get the win? Yeah, uh, I think it's guys just believing in each other, uh, you know, and, and taking it one play at a time. Uh, you know, just, you know, to start the drive, everybody's like, man, no matter what, you know, just one play at a time, one play at a time. That's, that's, that was the message, message um, you know, before the two minutes started. And, um, you know, when guys went out there and made plays and, and you know, you kind of just black out and, and just play football after that. Take us through the throw to Kayshawn at the end. Um, took a good shot to your lower half. It looked like. Did you know the hit was coming? And you know what? What'd you see on that play? Uh, no, I didn't. I mean, I didn't see it. Uh, uh, he made a Kayshawn made a great play. Uh, you know, I felt like I, I underthrew it as soon as it came off my hand. I was like, like, damn. You know, that that that's the one. But uh, he made an unbelievable play. Uh, play that we needed at that time. And uh, the safety had tilted the the opposite way away from the X, uh, which where, where Kayshawn was lined up and. Um, he did the rest. I, I, I was a mere, you know, speckle on the play. Hey, Jacoby, through the first seven games, there were seven different offensive line starting combinations. And this was, I think, the, the second time that this group got a chance to play together to start a game. What were your thoughts watching them initially uh, in, in terms of – talked about body blows, even on two, three-yard runs, applying body blows to the Jets' defense. Did you see them coming off the ball uh, in, the, in the start of this game a little bit differently? And, and what would you say overall about their performance today? Yeah, uh, you definitely saw the confidence build throughout the game. Um, you know, they, the, the, the Jets have a good D-line, uh, you know, and obviously getting Hassan back this week was a – was I mean, they, it was a boost for them. Uh, and, you know, those guys knew that they had a challenge, and, you know, you could see it. You know, I mean, as I was in the game, you can see it as as those guys, our guys, you know, confidence starting to build and and, you know, asking for plays on the sideline and, and, and buying into the plan and, and you know, communicating. Um, so I thought he did a hell of a job. Jacoby, uh, we could hear the celebration in the locker room echoing down the tunnel. Can you just take us through what it was like go coming off the field into that locker room, having this is the first win at home six weeks uh, since uh, – Six, past six weeks haven't gone your way. What was it like coming into that locker room and sharing that environment with your teammates? Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, you know, winning in the NFL is hard. Um, I know y'all don't think that, but it's, it's hard. Um, and, you know, the guys have, have worked hard throughout the, throughout the season, but going back to training camp and, you know, we've, we've, we've been in a lull, you know, things haven't been, been going our way, um, you know, but today the ball bounced our way and, and you know, to celebrate that and, and, and you know, it, experience that with the, with the guys, you know, it's, it's, it's a great learning tool for young guys, for one, but, you know, also for our team, it's just like, you know, if we just stick to state of course, stay, stick with the process, you know, and, you know, sometimes you get lucky enough and the ball bounces your way. Jacoby, I know team first, but you didn't like being benched, which just no one does. Yeah. How does this feel for you personally to have a little bit of a redemption story here today and lead the team down the field? Uh, I don't look at it as, as, as no redemption, um, you know, uh, I think this is a testament to me believing in myself uh, and not y'all, and, and um, I'm very aware of that. And, and you know, I, I was I, I was very fortunate that um, you know that, to have this opportunity and, and to go out there and you know and get a win. You know, with our guys, you know, it was um, you know it was sweet. I mean, I, you can't put it into words, but um, you know, I'm not trying to like be arrogant or nothing, but I'm very proud of myself today. And Jacoby, also to that point, obviously getting benched isn't easy, but showing the resilience you did today, was there anything about maybe having that time? I know you're a really introspective guy, whether it was perspective or maybe just feeling a little healthier that helped you with that time compared to, you know, actually getting in the game? Uh, no, I was just, you know, believing in myself, um, you know, and, and 
uh, sticking to what I know is right and, and you know that I can play in this league is um, I don't look at as as anything else but that you know and like I said um, you know just believing in myself and, and going out there and and doing what I know I can do uh, on a day in and day out process and, and basis and and you know and these are the results. Hi, Ramondre. Uh, how good did that feel after what was an interesting week for you guys? Uh, how did that feel today to put that together? And, and it seemed like you had, especially on that final drive, that determination that you would not be denied. What was that like for you? Uh, yeah, it feels good to you know be at home, get a win, and yeah, it feels good to get a win at home. How about that final drive? Yeah, just being relentless, uh, trying to win a game. Big Booby Miles fan? Yeah, of course. We want to win, put Mondre in. That I'll stop with the references. <laughs> uh, Gerard described the offense today with a lot of runs that were maybe not the most physical, but were uh, not the most productive, but were physical, and described them as body blows. How important is it to bring that physicality to the running game, even if it isn't turning into the raw yardage that you may yeah. from the outside may want to see? All right, uh, it's very important. Uh, you know, just tiring those guys out up front, the front seven. Uh, you know, the Jets front seven, they're a very good front seven. They run around a lot. So just trying to, you know, wear them down up front and, you know, uh, be physical. Roger, we hear about next man up all the time. But, you know, what was the mood in the locker room when you guys heard that Drake was going to be out for the rest of the game? Um, like you said, just next man up. Uh, we had to, a game to win and a game to go play. So, yeah, next man up. Josh broke it here in the middle. On the uh, winning touchdown run, uh, did you know you were in the end zone? It was kind of hard to see from our vantage point with all those bodies in there and where you actually were. But did you know you crossed the plane? Yeah, I know I crossed the plane, yes. Ramondre, what was the difference between – right over here. Okay. What was the difference for you guys week three as opposed to this week? I know AVP talked about sticking with a run a little bit more. I don't know how much that figured into it. But just in terms of overall game plan and your approach, what was the difference between the week three loss and what happened today for you guys? Uh, well, I look at every game as a totally different game, even though it's the same team. Uh, but, yeah, I think we we ran the ball. We ran the ball a lot. Uh, we were physical up front. Um, O-line was moving people. Um, and I think we just had a, you know, a nice physical game. And I'm glad it, it, it ended the way it did. Alan Siegel, far left. Ramondre, after that third down didn't get in, it was fourth and one. It was going to be it for the game. You get in the huddle. You get in, you line it up, and you know you're getting the ball. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind in terms of knowing that this is it? Uh, just, you know, uh, the win is kind of on my back at this point in the game. So uh, I know I had to get in uh, regardless of what happened and, you know, to get the win, and I'm glad I did that. Ramondre here. Um, one word that I, I wouldn't think of when I hear you or see you play is soft. Um, can you talk about what you brought? Because you, you seem to have some tough runs. The zero-yard run that you hit about six times on the sideline, uh, you seem to have a little extra fight. I guess extra fight today. Uh, yeah, I, I like to think that's, that's me all the time. So, uh, you know, just being relentless, trying to gain yards, breaking tackles, and, you know, just trying to give my team a chance and stay above the sticks. Uh, that's what I try to do every game. How did you feel the team responded to those soft comments from Gerard from last week? I mean, I, we responded good. I guess we won. So, yeah. Reminder, you guys overcame a lot of adversity today. Obviously, Drake May goes down and, you know, some inconsistencies. What's Alex Van Pelt like in those moments? What's he telling you guys on the sideline as all these things are happening? He's trying to obviously get you guys to, you know, stay locked in. Um. It's kind of, it really is just next man up. Uh, you know, we got to stay locked into the game. Uh, we had a whole game to play. Uh, Drake got hurt pretty early, so we still had a lot of, a lot of time on the clock to, you know, go get a W. And I feel like we did a good job just, you know, believing in Jacoby, just believing in AVP and going to get it done. Last question, Bob Stewart. Hey, uh, Ramondre, the defense today, they're playing shorthanded again. Kyle, a scratch, Daniel not playing because of injuries. Uh, there were a number of instances where they forced the Jets into field goal attempts, one that was missed after a sack, uh, to give you guys the opportunity to come back and, and take the lead and then eventually to win the game. 
how would you characterize their effort today defensively? Uh, relentless. Uh, like you said, some, some guys had to step up today. Um, and I think they did a great job, uh, got us on the field when we needed to be on the field. And, you know, they played, it, they played physical. They played, you know, just how we would want them to play. So great by them. Thank you very much. Remind us. Thank you, guys. Marcus, you had said that you were close as far as maybe being able to get one going as far as the punt return. or uh, yeah. yeah, What was the feeling like for you, and how big of a boost did you feel that gave your football team? Uh, yeah, um, it was one of those situations to where Hasty had a great block first off. Uh, all my guys were, you know, working their tails off and everything like that all year and everything, so that was pretty good. But I owe them one for sure. I definitely should have scored, so I put that on myself. Hey, Marcus, can you describe – what it's like to go from playing defense and sometimes you've got to run down the field in coverage and then you've got to immediately refocus and, and catch your win to return a punt. What's that transition like and what was it like before that 62-yard return? Um, it's one of those situations to where you always make sure that you condition. You know, uh, we take pride on making sure that we're conditioned as a football team just in general. So uh, that's the main thing that we focus on. Hey, Marcus. Uh, you know, you guys come into the game six losses in a row and obviously coming back from London, not the easiest turnaround. Mm -hmm. How how do you sort of turn the, the – flip the switch, I guess, and, and mentally get yourself ready? And then what's it like to achieve the result when you do that? Yeah. Uh, Coach Mayo, you know, he talked to us about the situation of, of course, we know we have six losses, but it's all about going back to practice. You know, we can't mope on what's in the past. What's in the past is what we can't change. But uh, – it's one of those situations to where we do still control our destiny and uh, just making sure that we go 1-0 each week is the main thing. So we're happy that we got the dub. Uh, Marcus, sort of going off of that, uh, uh, past six weeks, uh, locker room hasn't been the most boisterous after a win, but this week we could tell a clear difference in the energy pouring. Like we can hear it out in the tunnel. What was it like coming into that locker room and sharing that moment with your teammates of finally breaking through? It felt great. Um, we put a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears whenever we come down to practice and just training camp and everything. So uh, it's hard to win in this league, and some people, you know, take it for granted, but it's, it's definitely hard to do. So we're happy to get the dub. Marcus, you're obviously a versatile guy who can play inside and outside, but you've mostly been a slot guy this season. So what was it like that in this game, mostly being on the outside, and what was the challenge that you had going up against, like, Garrett Wilson? Yeah, um, just that combo is uh, top tier for sure. Uh, Garrett, great player. Uh, Rogers, uh, Hall of Fame player. Um, it's one of those situations to where uh, I didn't play the best game, of course, but it was just one of those situations to where um, just taking it one play at a time and uh, definitely made a play at the end of the game. That helped out, but uh, just happy to get the dub. And along those lines, possibly part of the reason you were playing out there was that John, you know, wasn't um, practicing on Friday and is going, you know, was do, dealing with something off the field. Just as a teammate, um, a veteran guy, what are your thoughts on John and just sort of um, just help and lift him up and, and come out with this result? Yeah, um, us three, I would say Gonzo, uh, John, and myself, we all can play inside and out so it's one of those situations to where you know coach come up to us and let us know what he want game plan each week and we just go from there thank you very much appreciate y'all and if you have questions we'll start with dan oh man good to talk to you guys after a win i know right <laughs> could you point out all the negative things you did today hunter no just kidding yeah. um after what you guys were able to do after the week and, you know, what your head coach said, you guys had a meeting, uh, you have fourth and goal uh, with 25 seconds left. You put it in. What did, what did today kind of say about you guys uh, as far as the team goes? I mean, I think we've, we've been a tough football team the whole entire year. Um, obviously, record speaks for itself, and we haven't been able to produce that into wins. Um, but just guys just keep going to work, keep enduring uh, the hard times. And, uh, just continue to be mentally tough, I think, more than anything. Um, I think it was just good for everybody to go out there and execute and get a big win. Everybody needed that. Uh, Hunter, we could hear you guys uh, coming off the uh, field in the locker room, uh, hooping and hollering in, in the locker room. Where did that locker room rank in terms of celebrations after a regular season win and in terms of atmospheres you've had coming off the field? 
<laughs> where did it rank? I mean, it's always a good. Um, it's a great feeling. Um, I mean, especially the way the season's gone so far. I mean, six straight weeks of you know just tough locker rooms. Um, so to finally break through and and have a you know big win for us, especially here at home. It's just it's just what we needed, and you know the locker room obviously reacted like how it should. Um, I mean, that's a big win, divisional win. Uh, against a, a really good football team that has a lot of talent. So um, it was huge for us. Hey, Hunter, uh, after losing Drake in the second quarter, how do you characterize Jacoby's performance, not only on the field during plays, but handling the situation on the sideline in the huddle? Yeah, Drake, uh, obviously it was tough to see him go down. Um, you never like to see that. Hopefully he's, uh, he gets better and he's good. Um, but uh, Jacoby's just a, a proven vet, a guy that's been around, played a lot of football, obviously played a lot of games with us this year. And, uh, you know, it was, had to, you know, sit the last couple of weeks, but he's always ready, man. And uh, for him to step up, you know, lead a big drive at the end of the game um, was huge. And I, I was super happy to, you know, go out there and compete with him. Can you describe uh, the feeling inside the huddle before that touchdown at the very end? I think you guys had four tight ends technically on the field, but two of them were offensive linemen, so there's a lot of a lot of size there. Um, yeah. What were you guys thinking going into that play? Uh, well, we needed, whatever, six inches. So uh, we, we needed just to get, you know, basically the football across the, the goal line. So play that we've repped a lot, and we were able to execute Madre, you know, tough running and able to get it in. Josh Progredier. Thanks. Hunter, this week we asked you about what the comments of Gerard kind of would, would do for you. You said you were going to look in the mirror. And I'm wondering if that, what he said last week, sort of motivated you or inspired you somehow to, to come out and, and get this win today. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm very, I'm always motivated uh, myself. Uh, you know, I've played this game a long time, and you've got to have some kind of motivation to keep you going. And, you know, I have a, a lot of motivation that just keeps me playing this, trying to play this game at a high level. Um, and so I think, but I think it was, you know, when your leader says something about you like that, I mean, you never want that to define you. And these guys, um, I think, responded well. I think we all responded well to, you know, what was said last week, and we're able to go out there and get a win. Hunter, speaking of responding, it was a difficult day for the most part for the receivers. There were a number of drops out there, uh, including a couple for Kayshawn. Uh, one, during that period of time, when there wasn't a lot of production from the other guys, how much pride did you take in being the reliable guy, tight end uh, for Jacoby, for Drake before that? But then what did Kayshawn show you on that final series, the way he answered with those catches? I always want to be reliable. Um, I mean, that's something I, hopefully by the end of my career, that's you know one of the number one things guys can say about it. They can rely on me in every situation, not even just football, but rely on me off the field too. Um, and I think it was really cool to see how those guys responded, though, like you said. Um, I mean, huge play by Kayshawn at the end. Uh, I was really happy for to see him, you know, make a big play. It's, it can be hard, you know, when, when you know, you get hit with some adversity. I mean, we, this team has been hit with adversity. Um, so, the, you know, for him to respond the way that he did and make a big play in a big moment, you know, those last two catches at the end um, was, was huge for us. And, you know, it was exciting to see him kind of get going. Hey, Christian, Mike. how would you describe just what the uh, atmosphere was like in the locker room after the game, given the struggles uh, results-wise leading up to today? Yeah, no, it was ecstatic. Um, it's what we expect from ourselves. It's what we expect from this team. Um, you know, all glory to God and to the men I fought alongside today. Um, we did great. Hey, Roach. What was your mentality today? You seemed like you had a bunch of energy. I think you led the team in on nine tackles. He had a sack, a pass breakup. What was it like for you to play out there today? What was going through your mind the entire game? Um, be joyful. Be joyful with the opportunity God's given me. Um, I felt like last week um, when I was watching film, I just didn't like how when even I made a play or when my teammates made a play, my mind was automatically onto the next play instead of enjoying the moment. Um, so my mentality going to this game was be joyful. Be joyful with every opportunity, every snap, every breath the Lord gives me. Hey, Christian, speaking of that sack, can you take us through the blitz call in, in your sack of, of Rodgers? Because obviously it's a huge yeah. play, given what happens next. Yeah, no, um, we had a, me and a Del had a little miscommunication at first. 
we got it sorted out. So I ended up adding in late. Um, and it just, I was able to chip Brees on the way in. And then um, my mind kind of just went blank and it's see ball, get ball. Mm -hmm. Hey, Christian. Uh, chip right here. Oh, it, sorry. <laughs> it uh, seems like your role is growing every week, especially the last few weeks. How has your, you know, day-to-day -day changed during the week? And just how do you kind of, you know, keep track of everything or, or yeah. um, just stay on top of it when there's new things every week? You know, I think my coaches do a great job of getting me prepared, of um, making sure my eyes are in the right place. I have good keys. Um, when it comes to the things I do on the day-to-day, -day, um, I do watch a little bit more film. I watch, I stay a little bit longer. Um, but I wouldn't say much changes. Um, I always prepared like I'm a starter. Um, but I would say I maybe just watch a little bit more, stay a little bit longer, and it seems to be working out. Christian, was there anything you guys changed uh, with your front today to help your production against the run? You know, last few weeks obviously been a little bit different story, but much better in terms of overall production today. Um, it really came down to everyone doing their job, you know. Um, for us as linebackers, we have to have good eyes, good, good keys, you know. If you have your eyes in the wrong place, then you're going you're gonna to be all over the field. You're never going to be where you're supposed to be. Um, and I, I would say that's why I took from the last few games I've played is I'm like, I got to lock in on my keys, on my, on my eyes, and then, you know, the play will come to me. Don't, don't try to do someone else's job, you know, do my job. I know that DeMarcus Covington's mentioned that last year you were really exclusively a special teamer, but this offseason really started working more on the defensive side of the ball. I'm curious what exactly changed, and I know you mentioned like in season how that changed for you, but really just what was that like going from someone who was only in one phase to someone who could contribute in multiple ways? Um, I, I would say it, it comes down to the coach's belief in me. Um, they saw – or at least I think they saw that I could. I'm a, I'm a little bit faster. Um, I can cover pretty well. And it's just I feel like when talking to them, they said they want to use my tools a little bit more. Um, you know, I, nothing is given. Like nothing I have is given for me. It's all given me from above. Um, so whether it's a small role or a big role, um, I'm gonna play my heart out. And I think you know I wouldn't be where I'm at now if it weren't for High, Mayo, DC, um, and even like Mike and Bry. Um, there's, there's just, there's a lot on our defensive side and with the coaches and we're with belief in me um, and just feeding into like, hey, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best, play like it, play like it. Um, so I have, no, I have nothing but high praise for the coaches and getting me ready for this role. You mentioned earlier uh, appreciating things in the moment, and we overheard a little bit of that uh, walking past the locker room. We could hear the celebration on the inside. Could you just take us what it was like in that moment uh, celebrating with your teammates and what it felt like to get that win? Um, I think it was – I think it was a great win. You know, it, it was ecstatic in the locker room. Um, I think we're all hungry for more now. I think we're hungry for being better because the game today wasn't perfect. Um, you know, we strive for perfection. But in the moment, you know, like I said, we want to enjoy the things that come to us. Um, I think it, it was great to just to see everybody smiling, everybody excited to win, excited to be here, and ready to keep going forward. Uh, Keon, after the game, said that Aaron Rodgers looked maybe less mobile than he did earlier in the season. Was that something that you guys noticed as a unit, or was it just him? You know, obviously you had the sack there mm -hmm. early in the game. Were you able to notice that as a unit? Um, I, I've watched a lot of film this week, and I couldn't tell that he was less mobile. There was a few times where um, he was getting out of the pocket a lot, like against Denver, um, you know, just showing that he had, like he's older, but his legs are working well. Well, um, maybe that's just something Keon picked up on. Um, I didn't notice it out there, nor did I. Um, not that I didn't care, but I didn't. It wasn't going to affect how I was going to play. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.